How's it going? This is Dad in the City coming to you with a video on the Blackstone 22 inch griddle. We're going to be making my version of a Juicy Lucy and a Smash Burger today. So I'm going to take you to the process how I do this. Also, we're going to be using my new custom made uh, table that I made for this. Uh, it's to go along with my chest cooler there that I made. And it's also some leftover cedar that I had. So here we go. So this is the little table I made. It's just some two by fours with the cedar top on there. I did the extension just so I can lay things on top of this. And also the bottom for now, it's gonna be used as my tank holder, but I'll show you how this looks. The nice thing about this setup is that I don't have to worry about having the shelf because I actually have that here. And if the fuel line gets in the way, I can actually just rotate this entire griddle so that way I wouldn't have anything blocking my uh, surface or my extra table there. So here are the burgers we're gonna be making today. I've already gone in and pressed them. I have cheese on five around and then I'm gonna make two half pound smash burgers and one that's a quarter pound smash burger and we're going to be using our kaiser rolls on there i'm going to try to butter and just kind of put on the griddle and then just make sure that the buns just get lightly toasted so one of the things that i realized when uh setting this up and actually just determined right now with the shelf being on the other side where I have it now, I do have the ability to rotate the griddle and actually hook up my tank where the hookup onto the grill doesn't get in the way. It actually keeps the shelf nice and open. So I'll bring you in so we can take a close look at this grill. Do you need to clean up a little bit more before we start our burgers? Okay, so let's get some fuel into our griddle. That's our first one. And the second one. So one of the things about Blackstone is I had an issue with my igniters where they were very loose at the beginning uh, actually this one was and I contacted contacted Blackstone and they were actually gracious enough to send me these knobs uh, additionally to the setup there so one of the things I do want to say is that customer service with Blackstone is very very good right now okay so I don't want my grill to be super hot so I am going to just let it warm up a little bit I might oil it up just a little bit so it doesn't stick completely, but the burgers do have oil or grease themselves, so I think that should be enough. Even though it's pretty clean, I am gonna wipe this down because I haven't used this in a while. If you notice, it is fall home outdoors, so we are getting a lot of leaves just falling right now. So see, the towel was dirty or just stained itself, but this grill is pretty clean right now. So we're just gonna oil this up and we're gonna start cooking. I did put my burners on medium low because again, I don't want this to be super hot. It does allow me to put everything that I need on there. So again, I'm only gonna put a little bit of oil on here. It's mainly just so that I can re-season this griddle. Spread this oil around. I got these, I did buy these off of Amazon, these uh, griddle spoons or uh, flippers. I'm not in love with them. The handle's a little too small for my liking. I cover it with my entire hand uh, and also the paddle itself is a little narrow. I would rather get it a little bit wider. So my suggestion to anyone thinking about getting one of these griddles and still trying to, you know, save some money, 
definitely invest a little bit on your tools uh, because you are already spending a lot on the griddle itself but you know your hands are very close I would like the handle to be a little further back on this one maybe about another two three inches so just so that my fingers aren't as too close to this griddle because depending on how you use this you know it does get very hot so they grab a new uh, towel here what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wipe this around and get try to get some of my surface area as well When you oil this griddle up, you definitely don't want to get too much grease on here. You want to wipe down some of this excess. You just want it to be on top. So right now I did clean up a little bit more off of this. And again, the good thing I like about these is then I can just, you know, wash this and it'll be good to go. All right, here's the first one. As you can already tell, this is already hot enough where you can hear that sizzle. For me, my middle zone is definitely the hottest zone, and then the sides are off by a couple of degrees. I'm not going to press these burgers, really, because I want them to just sear and then collect or actually just melt the cheese inside. And I want to retain as much of the juices as I can. So now that they're on this side, I'm going to go ahead and hit them with a little bit of salt and pepper and then some more of that Worcestershire sauce. And what I'm using is just pink Himalayan salt on these. One of the biggest things that I have uh, or not a complaint, but I've definitely noticed, and many people have noticed, is definitely the wind um, effect on the sides of the skirtle because it is open. So a lot of air does flow through. I know people have created some uh, wind guards, and I think I'm, I think that actually Blackstone sells it as well. Um, one of the things I wish is that we didn't have to do that, um, that it should come already prepared. Go ahead and flip one of these burgers really quick. So it's already got it, it's getting that nice sear on top of that burger. And these burgers here are actually. This press, I didn't have any binders or anything on here, so they should fall apart fairly easy when you bite into them. I'm going to hit them again with some of that Worcestershire sauce. And I don't want these to get fully cooked because what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them over to my cooler zone once they get that sear and just let them kind of cook up and steam a little bit while I make the smash burgers. Alright, so I'm going to let these kind of sear up a little bit on their own before I go ahead and press them. I'm going to take some of the, one of these burgers out or maybe two so that they're not completely well done on my end. I'm 
So most of these are already uh, well done, so we're going to take those out. I think these are good. We're going to press with the first burger here. Good press. It's definitely not a little bit. It's not complete. So we just pressed our first burger. Definitely not pressing completely even. This is my first time. I'm going to try to just let the press do all the work. So here we go. A little bit more uniform, a little bit thick, so I'm going to press a little bit more. That looks a little bit better. Then we're going to go ahead and press this one here. This one's smaller, thinner, so it'll cook a lot faster. That's it. So definitely clean my part a little bit more, it's a little bit thinner. And these ones are looking pretty good. I think these burgers are done back here. Gotta put this little burger back together. Put another bun back here and these are all just kind of being heated up with the residual heat on the griddle I'm not actually this burner is completely off and I'm using some of that uh, meat grease coming off to heat these up or actually just to add some of that oils on there so they can just get a little bit uh, charred I was going to use butter but I'm going to put this away Let's see how this first one looks. Definitely stayed intact. Might need a little bit more heat. So it can get a better uh, sear on top. So I'm going to leave these in here a little bit longer. I don't know about you, what do you say about uh, toasted buns or not toasted buns when you have your burger? Uh, let me know, put it in the comments down below. Let me know if there's anything you also want to see me do on here. Um, I think I've done brats. I might have actually done burgers before. I don't remember if I made Juicy Lucy's. I'm going to have to check my videos. Uh, but I do use this for breakfast and I know I've been slacking on some of the videos. But for now, I'm going to recontinue with this on other black still riddle. But it's definitely something you can use or cook other things on here. I did do stir fry the first time I made this and it was delicious. That's a better sear on this burger. Okay, so we're almost done with this burger. Definitely I would suggest, and I'm not going to do this on this video, is always clean your griddle once you are done. You want to make sure that this stays seasoned. It is steel. It's a cast, uh, I believe it's a cast steel on here. If not, it's just uh, steel and it's been tempered very well. But definitely suggest you take care of it. If you take care of it, it should be fine. I have all my other stuff that I have that's cast iron. You keep it all seasoned and well maintained, and this is the easiest type of cleanup. 
Um, I used to actually clean this on hot. Don't do this on hot. It steams everything off right away and you're not able to clean this properly. So do this to a medium low or low if you can. But definitely do it right after you do this. Notice this is again the hotter zone just because this is hot, the middle zone is hot so there's less residual heat towards the end. The further away we get here it's going to be a lot, lot less. Take this little guy off, which is probably for my son. Can't throw those pieces out taste them right now they'll probably be great very caramelized and ready to go definitely taste just the meat on here which is what I was going just a little bit of seasoning and all you need is just the meat because you are going to put other stuff on here um, this was a ground chuck and it was an 80 20 just in case you were interested This is one of the few times you will see me kind of press the burger a little bit just because I do want it to get that sear on top. This one is ready to go. This is probably not going to get the sear anymore just because it's been cooked a little bit already. So after this we are going to clean this up. This is Dad in the City saying thank you very much for watching my video. If you can, please subscribe, like, and comment. Let me know what you would like to see me cook on here again. And as always, enjoy the outdoors no matter what the conditions are. Thank you and have a great day.